Hey guys, welcome back to the last video of the series of the Armor of God. In this video, we are going to talk about the sword of the Spirit. Ephesians 6 verse 14 Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth, and having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Verse 16 In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one. Verse 17 And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. So, the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God. This is a weapon of the Spirit, and you can't fight without the Spirit. Or you can try, but you won't be successful. The Greek word used here is rima, which is the spoken word of God meaning guidance from the Holy Spirit for specific situations. This is also why it is called the sword of the Spirit, because the Holy Spirit will guide you, and He will guide you in truth. He will never say something that is not in line with Scripture, in line with the Logos Word, the Bible and Jesus Himself. Jesus told the disciples in John 14 verse 26, But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in My name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. I want you to understand this. You are in a spiritual battle and that is why the Holy Spirit should help you with this spiritual battle. He lives inside of you, in your body, your physical body, which is the temple of God. And He needs to lead and you need to follow, which means that He will guide you in every aspect of your life. He needs to guide your feelings, your thoughts, your plans, your desires, your whole life. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 19 says, Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own, for you were bought with a price. So glorify God in your body. This is also why you will grieve the Holy Spirit whenever you now sin against God. The Holy Spirit lives in you and He will convict you if you sin against God. You will feel bad, you will feel guilty and you will go to God immediately and ask Him to forgive you. That is what will happen if you truly are a reborn Christian. If you're not, then you will just continue to live in sin. But this is what it means to have a true living relationship with God Almighty. Ephesians 4 verse 30 And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. You know, the Holy Spirit is amazing. And it's amazing that He is in us. It's actually a big miracle. We just take it for granted. Let me explain this to you. When you are thinking things in your thoughts, people can't see what you're thinking, right? Only you know what is going on in your thoughts. And so it is the same with God. Only the Spirit of God knows the thoughts of God. And it is only He that can reveal it to you. And He does reveal Scripture to you. When you read the Logos, when you study the Bible, at first, when you're a new Christian, there are some things that are a little bit hard to understand. But as you grow spiritually, the Holy Spirit reveals the truth of Scripture to you more. So now, let's say a year or two from now, at that time you look back and say, Man, when I read this the last time, I couldn't understand it. But now, it, it's open to me. That's because of the Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 11. For who knows a person's thoughts, except the spirit of that person which is in him? So also no one comprehends the thoughts of God, except the Spirit of God. One of the most important things that you need to learn, especially as a young Christian, is to listen to and live through the Holy Spirit. It is crucial for the Christian life here on this temporary world. And you need to study God's Word to see what it says about living through the Holy Spirit. And you need to ask God to help you to do it. We see a good example about this already in the Old Testament. But Psalm 143 verse 10, Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Let your good spirit lead me on level ground. I've already talked about it in other videos, so you know by now that we are in a spiritual battle. You are in a spiritual battle every day, of your life and to help you to fight the devil, his lies, to be able to discern between the truth and the lies, you need both the Logos word and 
the Rima word. The Logos will help you to understand the truth, right? To read it, to know it, you know, to, to have the knowledge of it. But then the Holy Spirit through the Rima word will help you to understand it better while you grow spiritually. Hebrews 4 verse 12, For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. The Word of God piercing to the division of the soul and the spirit. It's amazing. You know, do you want to know the difference between your soul and your spirit? Then read this, study it, know it, and put it in your heart. Write it on your heart. Psalm 119 verse 11 says, I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And Hebrews 8 verse 10 says, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, declares the Lord. I will put my laws into their minds and write them on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. You need to understand that the sword of the Spirit is a little bit different than the other pieces of the armor of God. Why? Because the other pieces is only there for protection. But the sword of the Spirit is there to protect you, yes, against the evil one, but it is also there to go on the offensive, to strike back, because it is the sword of the Spirit that gives us freedom, power, truth, and spiritual life. And God speaks to us through the Spirit. John 6 verse 63, It is the Spirit who gives life. The flesh is no help at all. The words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. You need to understand that you are never alone. You need to hear this today. God is with you. The Holy Spirit is with you and He is in you. You're never alone and He won't forsake you. It might feel like it at times when there are difficult times in your, in your life, but God is testing you and He wants you to hold on to Him. When you are weak, then you are strong. What does that mean? It means that when you are there, you don't know who to call, who to talk to, who to trust. You don't know what to do. You don't have all the answers. That is exactly the time when you have to call on God. And the Holy Spirit is there with you. And in your weaknesses, because we have a lot of weaknesses, He will give you the strength you need to overcome. Romans 8 verse 26, Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. For we do not know what to pray for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself intercedes for us with groanings too deep for words. Prayer is crucial for the Christian life. I mean, this is how every relationship works. Good communication. How can you have a good relationship with God if you never speak to Him? You need to talk to Him. You know, right after Paul explains the armor of God, he says this, Ephesians 6 verse 18, Praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. You know, there are these certain phases that certain Christians, especially young believers, go through where they start to lose their focus, where they don't keep their eyes on God anymore, and they start to focus on this world with its problems. They go through this phase where they stop reading Scripture, they stop praying, they stop going to church, and they lose their focus, and then they just live for the world, but then suddenly over time things get worse, you know. There's a problem here, problem here, situation here. They start to stress and they stress a lot because they look at all the problems instead of looking to God. If this is you, listen to this. Philippians 4 verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Did you get that? It means also that your relationship with God determines how strong you are in Christ, how strong your faith is, and how you will react to this world. And that is why mature Christians are stronger than spiritual babies in Christ. A lot of Christians today especially, they stay babies for too long. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 1 But I, brothers, could not address you as spiritual people, but as people of the flesh, 
as infants in Christ. I fed you with milk, not solid food, for you were not ready for it. And even now, you are not yet ready, for you are still of the flesh. And Hebrews 5 verse 12 says, For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you again the basic principles of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, since he is a child. But solid food is for the mature, for those who have their powers of discernment, trained by constant practice to distinguish good from evil. The big issues for young believers, babies in Christ, big issues, problems that they struggle with, are not big issues for mature Christians. It's not because mature Christians are better or more holier. No, it is because they have a stronger relationship with God. It is a relationship that's been built over time by the knowledge of the Word, the Logos Word and the Rhema, having a true relationship with God, where they study Scripture, where they write it on their hearts and they live by Scripture. They live according to the promises of what God has said in His Word and they fully trust it. Their eyes are on Him, not on the problems, the issues of this world. They put on the armor of God every single day of their lives. Matthew 6 verse 6, But when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do you do this? How many times do you do this a week? How many times do you go through the door, you close it, you go, you kneel, you take out your Bible, you read, you pray, you spend time with God. How many times a week do you do that? Or should I ask, how many times a year do you do that? You see, we can't expect to have a good relationship with God if we don't put in the time. You can't expect God to bless you, to have a good relationship with Him, if you don't spend time with Him. Because that's not fair, is it? You need to make Him the priority of your life. Everything else comes second. Your wife, your children, your career, everything that there is in this world comes second. God has to be the priority of your life. Jeremiah 29 verse 13, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. Don't play around with God. God does not want a relationship with you if you are a lukewarm Christian because He will spit you out of His mouth. Don't play around with Him. Don't play religion. Don't mock God because He is not mocked. Galatians 6 verse 7, Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that will He also reap. This world and everything that this world can offer you cannot even begin to compare to what you have in Jesus Christ. The temporary cannot compare with the eternal. Don't waste the time that God has given you. Use it to run the race as a warrior. Fight the good fight in the armor of God until He calls you home. Let Him lead you and you follow. Pick up your cross and follow Jesus until the end. And always remember, God loves you and I love you too. Bye. Take my life and let it be consecrated.